Rome's greatest concrete domes. We're going to be exploring two main places on Ancient Rome Live today. Take it Rome and to the Bay of Naples. First of all, the Pantheon. We start with the greatest concrete dome ever constructed by the Romans. It's built between Trajan and Hadrian, completed by about 125 AD. It's still standing. And we can admire this volume, this size, this scale. Its diameter of the interior of the rotunda is 43.5 meters in diameter. Incredible. At the base of the walls for the rotunda are as thick as five meters, but it tapers to the top to about one meter. And you can put a perfect sphere inside this structure. And what the Romans seemed to have been aiming for was about 150 feet in width and 150 feet in height and they're just a little shy of that mark. The oculus itself is about 30 feet across, creating a solar calendar on the interior of the dome. We passed the Domus Aurea as another noteworthy concrete dome of the Romans. The octagonal hall is built as one of the refined features of the Domus Aurea, the Golden House of Nero. Now it's not that large when we think about it comparing to the Pantheon, but it does have a complex system of weight-bearing piers and then a series of rooms around the octagonal hall that are miraculously illuminated by hidden openings that are apart from the wide opening of the oculus. So it really was a noteworthy architectural wonder for the Romans of the Neronian period. We passed a baia, which is in the northern bay of Naples, the Gulf of Pozzuoli. And these thermal bath spas are where you have the development of many domes. This is the first great concrete dome of the imperial period dating to the reign of Augustus. Now only just over 21 meters in diameter, originally about 21 meters in height as well, it can't help but remind you of the Pantheon. You got your Oculus, you've got your marble-lined walls originally, but you also have water. This is the so-called Temple of Mercury in Baiae, and it is our oldest, one of the oldest, unreinforced concrete domes still standing. For a tour of the site of Baiae, please join Darsara Diggs on YouTube to get a sense of this incredible archaeological site. Now, another famous and important concrete dome the so-called Temple of Venus, also in Baia. And this is an expansive, expansive rotunda with a diameter of over 26 meters that was on the water's edge originally. And again, it was a structure filled with thermal bath spring water. An incredible, incredible experience in Baia. And of course, the remains are impressive, even though the dome is not intact, which gives us a sense of just how incredible Baia as a site originally was. Another structure, a thermal bath complex with a huge dome, is the so-called Temple of Diana. Again, not a temple, but a thermal spa area filled with hot spring water, almost 30 meters in diameter, poorly preserved but very, very impressive. Now to Lake Avernus, nearby Baia, there is the so-called Temple of Apollo, again, a thermal bath complex on water's edge. And this was truly astounding in scale with a diameter of 36 meters. Look at the people passing by 
for scale. This was again a gargantuan structure. We have so many vaulted structures here in Baia, in the northern bay of Naples, the so-called Gulf of Pozzuoli. The domed architecture that they are creating here around Pozzuoli and Baiae is exceptional and there's nothing like it. And of course, you're right on this beautiful, historical, mythological lake, Lake of Ernest. The Baths of Caracalla were built between 211 and 216 AD encompassing an area of over 25 acres. And one of the standout features was the domed caldarium. Very poorly preserved, but originally it was quite massive and had a great affinity in its scale with the Pantheon itself. The mighty caldarium with a dome of gilded bronze, about two thirds the size of the dome of the Pantheon. Magnificent wonders in the Baths of Caracalla. We can look at the two still standing piers to get a sense of the scale, the original scale of the domed caldarium of the great Baths of Caracalla. We can also take a look at the so-called Temple of Minerva Medica, which was a vaulted, heated dining room in an imperial complex that probably belonged to the Emperor Gallienus in the 260s AD. You get a great view of it and its restored dome when you take a train out of Termini train station. We can admire just the scale, the size of the openings and the windows that gives a sense of the bravura of the engineers at the time. And we can also admire the remains of the dome and understand the lightness of the construction. We have the Pantheon Dome. We have the Octagonal Hall in the Dome of Saudi, but here in Baiae, you have so many more dome structures. This one's Hadrianic, right on water's edge. And the oldest poured concrete dome that still stands is also in Baiae that goes back to the time of Augustus. So in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, experimenting with concrete, sure, Rome is one of the centers but another one is down here in the Bay of Naples. It is essential then in your studies of archaeology and architecture and engineering to experience the dome structures of Baiae. So there you have Rome's greatest concrete domes from the Pantheon and the Octagonal Hall, the Domesaria, down to Baiae with so many incredible concrete domes. Join Darius for a tour of the archeological site at Darius Aria Digs on YouTube, and join us weekly for new incredible content in Rome and throughout the empire. Thanks for watching.